Alright guys, welcome back to more Let's Play Pikmin 2. We are in our first underground area, Emergence Cave. Uh, and we have uh, quite a bit here to do. We have some uh, new enemies. We have what looks to be an orange. Oh, I hope I got that one back in time. All right, a 7-up uh, bottle cap. Quenching, quenching emblem for 100 Pocos. There, you know what? Swarm. There we go. All right, haven't lost anyone yet. Let's grab those guys. Okay. Swarm. Good. You know what? That's fine. <laughs> good. How could you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. But I do not think beasts will be worth much. There we go. Alright, so each of these little uh, guys are worth um, two. That's what it seems. Uh, yeah, two. Alright, six and 25, so that's 31, so we'll be good. All right, and here we go. All right, an orange, 180. Citrus lump. <laughs> All right, we're doing great. We're almost at a, a tenth of our uh, debt that we have to collect. This hole appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treacherous terrain ahead. Louie, you do recall that you can adjust the camera with L, R, and Z, correct? Your expression suggests you do. Excellent. Then approach the hole and press A to enter it. Alright, uh... Delve deeper with our Pikmin. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. We're doing fantastic. We got two treasures on that one floor. Sub-level two of the Emergence Cave. It's the final floor. All right, time to swarm, guys. All right, good. We got to them before they could kill our Pikmin. Yeah, you know what? Take those. It's the top of the globe. It inconceivable that such an immense object has been buried here for so long. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even a hundred red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. Let's see, it needs us to have 101 Pikmin, which as we know is physically possible, especially since we only have 70 right now. All right, we got uh, four more treasure there. Is it just me or is it very dark? There we go. Ooh. 
There. Swarm! Got him. Alright, um... Okay, I do see another one. Alright, swarm. Got him. Man, I'm good. Haven't lost a Pikmin yet. Alright, we have another uh, little guy up here, though. We should get... Right. <laughs> we actually have a guy trying to grab it. Okay, let's continue further with these guys. 40 Pikmin will be good. Astounding. A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. Alright, now here's the thing. I'm gonna... Uh... No, I really wish that it would, uh... It would separate them by, like, uh, type, like flower and bud, because I don't want the buds. I only want flowers, or not flowers, um, all right, you know what? I could probably test something here. There we go. There. Now I only have leaves. There we go. And the flower's gone. Alright, now I can take control of all these guys. Alright. Here we go here we go, guys. Uh Louie. Boom. <laughs> Amazing. A purple Pikmin. It has hair and is quite stocky. It seems very heavy and strong. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers. Intriguing. Perhaps there are others? Alright. So there we go. We have purple Pikmin now. And they are big, stocky, and they are ten times stronger than other Pikmin. However, they're much slower. Like, I want to say a uh, flower of the purple might be as fast as maybe a bud of the red if that all right let's grab the uh let's grab these guys yeah here come the purple look at how slow they are oh but those they uh got left, they got left behind there we go All right. Is there seriously one Pikmin that's having trouble grabbing on? There. One purple Pikmin is worth 10 in terms of power and lifting. And this is our second type of Pikmin in this game, and it's our first new one. And so we're gonna need purple Pikmin for uh, various uh, things. And purple Pikmin will really help with taking on big enemies. All right, 200 bucks, 200 pokos. The spherical atlas, 
which has the uh, northern hemisphere. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside this sphere, retrieving data. Error. I could only decode a portion of the data, but I did retrieve new geographic charts. I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the sphere chart. Press start pause to contact me and access the explorer kit on the radar screen with L. Now that we have this new data, you should explore the decoded territory tomorrow. All right. And so I believe we are done with uh, this cave, actually. All right, I'm waiting for the purple Pikmin because I don't want them getting left behind. Because they will. All right. Now, if only there was some, like, nectar or something to, uh, turn them into flowers, because that'd be very helpful. Astounding. Water is shooting out of this geyser with incredible force. Sensors indicate it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press A to try. And there's a hole. And this is how, oops, this is how we exit the, uh, the caves. Yes. <laughs> I love that. All right, in the cave, we got uh, three treasure and uh, quite a bit of enemies. Wow, 502 just in that cave. That is awesome. All right, and it takes us back to the Valley of Repose, which I believe we will... Um I don't know. It depends. Do we get, uh... Yep, we get another cutscene. You have successfully returned to the planet's surface. Excellent decision-making, gentlemen. We must celebrate your first successful splunking expedition. You've gathered a large amount of data that needs to in-depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. Olimar and Louis, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. <laughs> You should take a much needed rest as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. Haste makes waste, so take it slow and steady. Alright, so we're not constrained by time, except for, you know, during the single day, uh, to collect all the treasure that we need. So, and the purple Pikmin, go into our ship. Uh, they, I think it's like something about them enjoying the exhaust ports or something. Because like, it, it, it's going to be very warm and they were like, made in a, in a very warm climate. So it, it might be something to do with that, I can't really remember. Alright, today's report. 672 treasure. Alright, we uh, went for purple, we went up to 10, and for red, we went up to 60. We've had no deaths so far. 
Baby steps first, Olimar. Plan well and don't worry about me. Our debt is with happy Hoctate savings and loan after all. Besides, there's nothing left to repossess, so ha! Ha 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 ha. Okay. Alright, President, if, if you think that's funny. Alright, so... Alright, Emergence Cave, three of three, we've completed that. And it gives us a nice little, uh, Awakening Wood. It gives us a nice little flag in the corner to say we've completed it. Okay, so Piclopedia. Um. Alright, the Red Bull Board. Uh, Oculus Kageyame Risu, Grub Dog Family. This large, or this large organism has the familiar mandibles and craniable morphology of the Grub Dog Family, as well as the characteristic bulging eyes. As with most grub dogs, the creature's cranium comprises half of its total length and girth. Showing a scarlet abdomen with white spots, this creature is primarily nocturnal, choosing to prey upon smaller creatures returning to their nests. Originally classified as the spotty bullboard, further research has classified the species as the red bullboard. Subspecies of varied colors have recently been discovered, but academics are divided into two rival camps over how to handle their classification. <laughs> the snow bullboard. Pansaurus Pseudoculi frosticulus, breadbug family. Like the dwarf red bulborb, the snow bulborb is a member of the breadbug family that seeks to survive through imitating the appearance, the appearance and behavior of a bulborb. Its pale colorization and blue spots make it easy, make for easy identification. In particular, this organism mimics the hairy bulborb, but is of course unable to grow hair that gives the hairy bulborb its name. However, as the hairy bulborb has been known to lose its hair in certain certain circumstances, the snow bulborb is an effective mimic that is often mistaken for a member of the same species. Violet Candy Pop Bug. Flora Punicius Candy Pop Family. Research from our most recent expedition has confirmed the presence of candy pop buds in subterranean regions. Considering the micro uh, microecologies this planet has been found in, one could surmise that it could be found in any cavern regardless of geographical region. Tossing Pikmin in this flower results in the release of purple Pikmin seeds, regardless of the color of the Pikmin tossed in. The variety of candy pop contains robustly odoriferous, odoriferous oils. If candy pop flowers could be cultivated, there is no doubt that the plants would offer multifaceted benefits to the cosmic Cosmetic, medical, and Taurus industries. And the clover. The Quantris infectum clover family. This is a naturalized species. The, these plants are extremely persistent, and with assistance of the symbiotic fungus that grows on its roots, the species is able to survive even in drought conditions. Typically, its leaves come in groupings of three, but intense impact on the leaving stem early in the development cycle can result in an extremely rare four-leaf cluster. Alright, and so that is our, um, uh, Piclopedia. Now we have the, uh, the treasure in which, uh, so Citrus Lump. This fruit was dug up from the floor of an icy cavern. It appears that the fruit's thick skin protected it from the frigid cold. It's quite remarkable. The shape of the fruit eerily resembles the president's head. P.S. The labyrinthine underground and trails of this planet are like a completely different world. The area we recently touched down in is blanketed with a fresh layer of frozen precipitation. As tranquil and relaxing as it is, I named it the Valley of Repose. Using Pikmin to move obstacles, I was able to open up some new areas of exploration where I found this hunk of metal. I often brag about my inexhaustible supply of self-control, but when I peer at this treasure, I can't help but want to take a drink. The purple Pikmin were somehow able to carry this massive treasure. Today, we measured their physical strength using the ship's onboard beefometer. <laughs> it seems that they have ten times the weight and physical power of any other Pikmin. When I throw them, they land with a resounding thug. I decided, decided to commemorate the cave I first encountered them in by naming it the Emergence Cave. Alright. Um, and I think that's actually it. Yeah, just... We just cycle back through. So when uh, we come back, guys, we will uh, be going to the new area, which I don't remember the uh, name of. It is 
the awakening wood so thanks for watching guys and i will see you then take care